Well, Chernobyl is the hit series. It's a limited series that's done incredibly well this year, racking up a whopping 19 Emmy nominations. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I'm here with the man who directed the entire thing, Johan Rank. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this is a, a really massive, beautiful production. Uh, can you just tell us how you got involved with Chernobyl to begin with? Sure. Um, thank you for your kind words to start out with. Um, I was, uh, I pretty much just exited another limited series I've done in, in Eastern Europe uh, called The Last Panthers. Um, so I came sort of coming out of that, I, there's a script on my desk saying Chernobyl, and I, I knew that that there, thematically that's something I'm going to be very interested in, but I have no desire whatsoever to, to go back to the to Eastern Europe with my whole family and all that. I have a lot of kids and a lot of sort of those kind of things that are, you know, part of my, my, my gang, so to speak. So I started reading the script, they, and, and they were undeniably good, and I was just sort of feeling inside like, ah, bummer that uh, I'm not going to go do this because this is such a great project. And, and it, yes, the further I read, I think there were three episodes existing by them, the further I read, the more I felt that it was sort of spot on for something I wanted to do. Uh, and then I realized that I, it was not about convincing me, it was about convincing my family <laughs> to go back to Eastern <laughs> Europe. So, so the producers, um, Jane Featherstone and Carolyn Strauss and, and Craig Mason, who also wrote the script, came to my house in, in New York thinking that they're there to convince me to do the project when I've already decided long ago. I was just looking for ammunition to, um, to uh, use towards my wife, <laughs> why we have to go and do this fantastic project. Anyways, uh, long story short, obviously I, I you know, in, in a not so uh, graceful way, uh, uh, told my wife that we that it's already done. We're doing this, um, um, but yeah. So that was that was it in a long way. Uh, you know, in hindsight, we all love the experience. It's not like we have anything to, against Eastern Europe. It's just these limited series are such long, cumbersome undertakings, and you know, it's literally like doing three movies on top of each other. So it becomes quite taxing for your family and your relationships, and you know, you perpetually live in some kind of limbo that is not as not real life. You're not with your. You're not in your home. You're not with your friends. The, the kids are pulled out of school to go to other schools and all of that. So, th so that's basically what it is. So, yeah. Um, you said the script sounded like a, a great fit for you uh, and something you wanted to do. Was there one specific element in there that really spoke to you that you wanted to capture? I think that it was a couple of things. They're beautifully written scripts. They have a, you know, they have. A, Two things that are very important for me is that there is a visual um, element in what's being done. You know, I, I saw that there is a world to be done here. And the second thing is that there is that there is sort of some poetic uh, elements to it as well, because I like when when there's sort of moments of impressionism and creating moments that are not only strictly narrative but also has to do with describing a, a mood, the images and music and whatnot, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And, and the scripts had a lot of those things within them added to the fact that it's a very, very compelling story and, you know, tremendously sort of intriguing characters. You know, they're, they were not, they, 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 these characters are, are multifaceted, complex and, and interesting. And it just felt like there was, there was nothing there for me not to like, to be honest. I, I was curious about your history too, because I know you actually started as in the music industry as a singer-songwriter. Uh, how did you first make the jump yeah. to directing? Well, it's, it's a very, you know, I, I played music my entire life. And then in the early 90s, I had, you know, me and a friend did a project that ended up being quite successful. And when I came to my record company boss and I said, oh, I want, uh, you know, Jean-Baptiste Mondino to do my music video and he said sure if you can convince him to do a music video for a thousand dollars here you go uh, so I realized fuck it I have to do this myself <laughs> and I do have a background in photography I, 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 I'm, I'm a photographer as well and all of that so I decided I'll, I'll try to do this video myself and this is in 93 or something like that and interestingly enough you know on that first you know that little shitty music video shoot we did there 
I realized uh, with great sadness in my heart that this is what I want to do. So I continued my musical career for a few years, but I started doing videos for myself and for friends and for friends of friends. And then Madonna called and I did some videos for her and blah, blah, blah. And then by that, I realized two things. One, that I love filmmaking, uh, not more than music, but I feel more complete in it because I realized I wasn't as talented in making music as I wanted to be. Uh, I wanted to be brilliant in writing songs, but I never felt I was. Whereas on filmmaking, it just felt very natural to me. So with, with, with sadness, I decided to, to abandon the, the music uh, uh, career and to fully hop into film, basically. Yeah. Well, you were able to combine them for a while because you did a lot of music videos. You were nominated for a VMA for David Bowie's Lazarus. Um, and do you think that there were elements of working on music videos in that realm that you were able to pull from and carry over to your film and TV work? Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, starting doing music videos. That I realized that this is going to be my film school. I had no interest in, in signing up for film school. That, but I, I want to learn through trial and error and playing around with stuff how to express emotions on film, so to speak. And and music videos was my tool for that. And it's a part, you know, my love for music and the the thought of of sort of how some music videos work uh, are definitely part of my filmmaking and not a big part but it's there it's one of the one of the uh, it's one of the, the outlets you, you can tap into when you're sort of dealing with particular matters in, in filmmaking I do believe that you know I'm, I would undoubtedly say I'm a director who who believes that music is a strong uh, power and strong force in filmmaking but, but you know all, all, all film directors are, are different and I like music I like the image as you know, my background as a photographer has also led to me really believing in, in visual filmmaking and understanding using the image as a the image itself as a relayer of emotions. You know, but that's just you know you 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 dig where you stand, and that's who who I am. You know, so yeah. Um, well, one of the things that I th I think I notice anyway about that photography and and music video background is, especially in Chernobyl, there are so many moments that are wordless, where the image is just kind of allowed to breathe and speak for itself. So do you consider that a, a hallmark of yours, or, or was that something just demanded by the script? Well, I guess it's a bit of, a bit of both. I think Craig, as a writer, definitely has these type of moments incorporated in the script, and, and that is definitely something that attracted me to this, to this script, that there were these... Uh, poetic um, and sort of impressionist moments in there uh, and you know for for any sort of venture to be made there is a necessity of, of a feeling of it's meant to be you know and I think I was a good match for the script Craig was a good match for me you know there was it just felt like we we, we complemented each other in a very good way in terms of how to to bring you know the scripts to life and and his sensibility is something that worked for me and you know whenever we would chat about stuff he would understand where I would be coming from so it was definitely you know I've, I've done a lot of stuff in my life and it's it's one of the you know most important aspects is it's not it's not what you do but it's who you do it with you know because that will give um, uh, that will give itself to the project and and will will increase drastically increase the, the possibilities for it to become good uh, along the way you know yeah I think one of my one of my favorite moments I, I think was the the bridge scene um, where everyone is sort of dan they don't know what's coming and they're dancing in the fallout um, it's this mix that you capture a lot it's kind of a mix of beauty and melancholy at once in the series uh, how do you choose moments like that? to film? Like, how did you decide to film the bridge? Yeah, I mean, I think what you touched upon is the, the interesting aspect of it is that you have to understand that there is beauty in tragedy as well, you know, because without that beauty, you end up with something that is just, uh, uh, what should we call it, depressing and, and, uh, and uh, you miss out on the human, you know, you can't miss out on the human beauty and, 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 and uh, Oh, sorry, Johan, you're still there? I think we were losing your audio. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? 
Hello, hello, hello. Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Again? I'm back. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in the. Yes, I'm in, back. <laughs> I'm in my country house. I have a rather spotty uh, internet. Um, what, can you just repeat what you said? Because I think we lost your audio. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, but I think that the, the, the key is to understand that even tragedy contains beauty. And I think that is was, was inherent in the script and it's something that I strongly fell for and, and really lo loved to sort of perpetuate through this so that that there is a sense of humanity, the beauty of humanity within something and the innocence of humanity within a, a massive tragedy like this, you know, and I think that scene is a good example of of that, you know, and uh, it's 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 wrong to say it's ignorance it's just sort of people uh, assuming based on on um, their experience and what they know and it, it becomes a very interesting juxtaposition between what's going on and what we see there so i you know i, I understand a lot of people like that scene um i was always worried that it was going to become too sentimental but no i think it really works because it's it's simple and it's it's beautiful and there is something in, inherently human about it that I think is is very interesting. You, know? you were talking about before about um, it's the people you work with on these projects that that make them, and this cast you assembled is really incredible. You directed three of them to Emmy nominations. Did you have people uh, actors in mind when you started the project? What was the casting like? Well, when when the when the uh, when the uh, project came to me, uh, the producers told me, we're thinking uh, Jared Harris, Stellan Skarsgård and Emily Watson. And I, I couldn't be more thrilled, you know, because I know Stellan since many years, I love him. I love Emily Watson deeply and, and you know, uh, their collaboration on Breaking the Waves is one of my favorite films um, ever. I don't know if you remember that film. Uh, and then uh, Jared is, is a character that I've always uh, had a very strong uh, um, attraction to because of his... Oh, Johan, are you still there? I think you froze up when you were talking about them. All right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to Sorry. do. Uh, can you hear me now? No? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. I'm back. So where did you lose That's me? okay. Uh, yes, you're back. Um, just re Sorry, just repeat what you said about the actors there. You well, had well, known well, Stellan Skarsgård beforehand? Yeah, I knew, I knew Stellan since many years. I, I knew pretty much all his kids and the whole family. They're Swedish as well. And I worked with, with a few of them over the years, you know. Um, <clears throat> Emily, somebody that I have had deep admiration for uh, ever since she and, and Stellan was in Breaking the Waves, you know, the, the Lars von Trier movie, you know. In which, which they're brilliant, and Jared is also a, an actor that I uh, that I had a very you know a massive soft spot for because he he has a particular demeanor and a particular psychology with him that I just always feel so strongly about. He's he's great at being a lot of things, but one of them that is is really great is to be um, pathetic almost. You know, if you think of him in Mad Men, what an incredible character that is. You know, and he's a very skilled multi you know, versatile actor, actor. So when they said that those three were in mind, I was um, tremendously happy about that. And I had no objections to that whatsoever. And, and then uh, after that uh, followed several months of casting the other 102 speaking roles or whatever it is that we have there. And casting is, is just a, you know, it's, 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 it's a hard, relentless, uh, you know, grind, but it's so important to make sure that every single person is perfect for what we're doing, you know. Sorry, I think we're having audio problems again. But when you have uh, when you have actors like that, who, like Jared Harris, who plays this great um, sort of unlikely hero in a way, what about, does any part of what you're thinking about the character change significantly, depending on what the actor is bringing to the table, your ideas of them? Yeah, well, of course, you know, uh, that's my job. My job is to be, uh, the, the, as a director, your job is to be the creator, the, the creative cohesive be, be between everything. And, and the fact remains that your job is to be the, the sort of the, uh, the director of what's going on. So, uh, you know, obviously there are a lot of times is that there is a conflict in what the instincts of the actor is and what I want to do. And, but that's just, 
the way it is and, and ultimately it, it's going to have to be what I want it to be because I don't understand anything else, you know. All I know is my sensibilities and my taste and if, if, if actors have other ideas, uh, you know, sometimes they're great but sometimes they have no bearing in what we're doing, then, you know, there will be uh, discussions. Uh, but there is no room for compromise in filmmaking there because then what the hell are you going to end up with? Some, some very fizzy soup that is going to be completely unedible, you know? So ultimately there has to be one vision and, and that's the one, you know, that you will have to go with, you know? Uh, but, but, you know, the, the, the good thing is a, you work with a lot of actors with very good sensibilities who have good instincts and who we share taste with. And the, and the second aspect is that, you know, it's, you, you know, it's, it's a fun creative process when an actor comes and has a, a particular thought on what this character is, and it could be completely not what it's going to be. And there's, it can be a fun process to uh, find a way into making him or her, or her understand what this other version could be and to find a way to try that out before anything else. So it's part of the job and um, I, I like that a lot. I, I love working with actors. Um, uh, I know from a, for a fact because a lot of actors have told me that, that it's very easy to work with me because I know exactly what I want. and. And I have no idea how our other directors work, but but that's just what it is. I know exactly what I want, and that's what we're going to go and get, you know. Well, clearly it did work because you have 19 Emmy nominations for the series, which is more than any other limited series this year. And I will say at Gold Derby, our TV awards you, um, Chernobyl racked up five of those. So what is it like? You mentioned it's this big journey that takes up years of your life. And what does it feel like to be embraced in that big way by the Emmys? Uh, well, I mean, I prefer to be embraced by the journey because that's what I love. I love filmmaking and I love being there doing that. And I'll, you know, I could wake up every morning and go and do this. Um, uh, there's nothing I love more than what I do. And I feel tremendously happy to have ended up in, in life doing something that I profoundly love and that I wouldn't change for anything. Even my, even my music, uh, even if I could have, have given the op opportunity to be a brilliant songwriter, I would choose what I'm doing. Um, on the other hand, I'm very Swedish, uh, very sort of Lutheran and um, stern. Uh, it's not for me to pat myself on my back or to feel uh, proud or anything like that. Uh, uh, but I do think I'm learning. I, I, I lived in America now for 13 years, 14 years, and I think I'm learning that you can allow yourself to embrace validation uh, and it doesn't have to be something to be embarrassed about or to want to sort of just walk away from and um, so you know i don't know I, I'm, I'm also on a summer break with with all my kids and my wife and my daily business is more about figuring out what the hell people are going to eat and what we're doing and all that kind of stuff so i haven't really had time to absorb extensively but I, I think that is basically also my way of uh, trying to discard what is ultimately an incredible honor and some fantastic news you know I mean it's a way 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 better than the opposite <laughs> so but uh, I think once I'm back home in New York and once I've sort of had the time to sit and mull up on this I'm sure I'm gonna be uh, feeling something and I'm actually, I've decided to go to the award ceremony, even though I'm not a fan of doing those kind of things, not the least because we have 19 uh, various nominations and we're all gonna be there. It will be a, a, an amazing opportunity to just hang out, get drunk and hug each other and, and, and look back and think about the fact that when we were doing this, I always said that this is gonna be great, but nobody's gonna watch it. <laughs> Uh, and then we can laugh at my stupidity in that. <laughs> well, people certainly watch. So uh, I wish you the best of luck at the Emmy Awards uh, upcoming. Everyone who's watching, please hit that subscribe button. Stay in touch with Gold Derby for all of our Emmy news. Johan, thanks so much for joining us and best of luck with the Emmys. Thank you so much.